Welcome to the Geo Blacklight demo. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating some of the work done in the past few months on Geo Blacklight and showing you a deployment of it. So, Geo Blacklight is a discovery application for geospatial data. So, that can be GIS data, uh, maps, uh, raster, um, and it supports a wide variety of um, resources. So here you can see this is the home page of Geo Blacklight and you can see our Stanford branding on it. We wanted to show the Stanford branded one to show how easily it is to customize Geo Blacklight. It uses uh, Twitter Bootstrap and the Blacklight application and there's a lot of documentation out there already about how to customize Twitter Bootstrap and how to customize Blacklight and we've done that here in a um, pretty simple way. Um, but it allows the application to be updated over time and for your local customizations to stay here. So we've added a header here with a custom feedback link um, where we can get feedback from users. You can see a Stanford um, nav bar here and we're calling the application Earthworks. You can see Earthworks logo here and it's uh, served at earthworks.stanford.edu and also a Stanford footer here. So this is the home page like I mentioned and you know, the main focus of Geo Blacklight is discovery. And so from the home page you can start jumping into um, GIS resources and finding what you need in three different ways. So Geo Blacklight supports three different types of searches, um, a text-based search, a uh, faceted refinement, faceted search, and also spatial search functionality. And you have an option to start off, uh, kick off a search from the home page in each of those uh, three ways. So I'm going to start with this by uh, just using the text-based search. I'm going to search for lakes. And now I can see my results. I get back almost 2,500 different results. So one thing to share about the results is we're um, using a federated metadata catalog. So part, as part of the Open Geo Portal Consortium, we're harvesting metadata from uh, various institutions. We're able to uh, allow services to download and visualize that data in our application. So for lakes, I get 2,500 results, which is great. Um, Hopefully in that um, I can find the data I need. And you'll notice here on the um, results page, I get paginated results. So I have the first 10 results. And when I hover over them, I actually can see the bounding box of where that result is on the map on the right hand side. Uh, clicking on the record here, I get a little bit more metadata so I can quickly inspect, hey, maybe this is what I'm looking for. Uh, so back here on the home page, I'm going to show a uh, faceted uh, search from the beginning. So I'm at Stanford, and maybe I want to view all the Stanford records. I can click the Stanford link there, and it's going to immediately drop me into a faceted search on uh, Stanford resources. You can see I have 1,200 different resources here I can access, and um, that's great. Uh, next to demo is the spatial search from the home page. It allows me to use this interactive map to zoom into an area I'm interested in and then click the search here button. So what that's going to do is that's, it's actually going to give me a focused search back on the result on results that are in the area that I just searched. So I can see that my results here when I hover over the boxes are in that um, uh, map area that I initially searched on. So one of the coolest, you know, so I demonstrated that these three different types of searches, but one of the really powerful things about Geo Blacklight is it allows you to incorporate um, all three of them together. So I've initially started this spatial search, and that's great, and I'm kind of in, in, in the India area here, but maybe I know what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm looking for polygon data, or point data, or line data, or maybe I'm looking for a raster image. But I can immediately use a facet to click and get results back 
on um, polygon data in that area. So that's great, and you know maybe I want to take that one step further, and I'm looking for you know something about voting. So now I, I have a text-based search voting. Um, I'm faceted on polygons, and I'm going to get uh, higher ranked results in the area I initially searched on for voting. So I can see here that this is an area in India, and it's actually um, voting results, um, election data from 2004. And, you know, that's possibly what I'm looking for here. I'm going to go back uh, to the results page and uh, just show a feature that we're calling dynamic search. And so you can see here this control, um, there's a checkbox here, search when I move the map. And so now when I move the map, I'm actually going to, my uh, results are actually going to update to try to be more relevant to the area that I'm uh, searching the map in. If I don't want to do this, if I just want to move the map and explore the area, I can just unclick that, and now my results aren't updating. But maybe I want to re-enable that, and I can click Redo Search. And it'll give me, you know, so here I am, I've moved over to the southeastern United States, or the eastern United States, and now I, and then when I re-enabled the uh, spatial search there, um, I can see, you know, voting districts in Alabama came up. So this this is the start of, you know, enabling all these three different types of search functionalities together, and it's a really powerful way to discover and find what you need. Some of the other facets that are available uh, to us are publisher, uh, institution. So I can see the various institutions, and maybe I'm looking for something at a specific one. I can do that. Uh, access. This is a really great one, so I can see which resources are public and which ones are restricted. Uh, place name, uh, subject, and we already went over publisher. Oh, so formats one here too, so I can see that you know all these results here in polygons are going to come back as shape files too. So I could click off polygon, and I can get some more um, formats available to me now. So now I want to, oh, one, one last thing I wanted to demonstrate was a um, plugin here on year. So we actually now have a range limit query. So I can actually look at results um, in a specific range. So if I wanted to only look at um, results from 1990 to 2013 uh, at Stanford, you know, I can see my Stanford facet is on here. And now I have uh, only results from this date range. And I, I get a little chart here and tells me how many results are in which uh, uh, which dates. And so I could I could limit my query to just this area right here and give me you know 479 results. So that's a great uh, advantage of using the Blacklight ecosystem is I'm able to bring in other Blacklight plugins like the Range Limit uh, plug plugin and use it here in Geo Blacklight. So this is enabled by default in uh, Geo Blacklight. I'm going to click that off. So um, one thing I want we've so we've showed you the home page, we've showed you the um, uh, the results page, but I've done a lot of different searches here, and that's great. Um, but what if I want to go back uh, and view a search I previously looked at? Um, one cool thing about Geo Blacklight. Um, is it uses a lot of the blacklight functionality and it has things like uh, search history already built into this. So I can see here in this session, I can see my first uh, search here, Lakes, you know, and then I had a um, you know, faceted search on Stanford and I can see all these different searches that I've done. And I can even save these searches. So these can be saved and now into my saved searches and they can be deleted and um, you know, if I want to delete them from my saved searches. So, you know, it has uh, you know, that user management uh, feature here. So if I come back to the application, I come back to my research, I'm able, easily able to jump into this search that I had previously saved. So, 
Uh, one other uh, cool thing is um, there's this option to bookmark something. So when I'm on a when I'm on an actual records page, um, and I think this is the first time we're showing this, is I'm able to click bookmark, and now this uh, record is saved in my bookmarks, and I have a way to uh, you know have a curated list of bookmarks. I can go back and access and easily jump into various records. Um, so if I'm researching a specific topic, I can easily get back to the um, records that I'm interested in. So back to the Stanford search, and um, I'm going to show. Um, so here's here's a file. Uh, here's a record here, and it's um, polygon boundaries of the Russian River watershed. Maybe I'm doing research in this area. I'm interested in um, waterways, you know, etc. Um, you know, one cool thing is I'm able to immediately see what this data looks like. So see what this geospatial data looks like if there's a um, GeoWeb Services um, link behind it. So there is in this case, and so I have um, a preview image here, and I can change the opacity of it. I can zoom in. Um, I can do feature inspection on it, so I can see that you know that quad name is Point Arena, and I click here, and you know it's a different one. And um, uh, another uh, feature here is I'm actually able to link out to um, searches. Um, so maybe I'm searching on the Reverend Russian River watershed. I can click that and link out to get files that have place uh, place names as the Russian River watershed. So that's pretty cool if I'm you know looking at a specific area I can immediately jump into a search off off a record that way. Um, uh, you know another thing here is you know the, finding the data is great but I also want to be able to download it and so we have uh, download um, functionality here implemented on the right hand side and I'm able to download the file in a variety of formats. So I can download it as a shape file, I can download it as a KMZ file, and I can also download it as GeoJSON. So I'm gonna click download a shape file here. It generates my download. Um, the download is then cached on the server so that, let's say a class or a lot of people were trying to go to one specific download, that download would be cached for them. So um, it wouldn't be requiring um, you know, significant web services resources and then I can click this link here and it, um, it starts off the download for me. So um, I guess I want to show um, I guess I want to show some maps uh, too. So I've showed mostly vector data but I also want to show um, I also want to show some raster data too here. And you know, I know that, um, you know, I can zoom around the map here and it'll change my uh, search here. And we have this uh, Africa 1834 raster image in here. So this is cool because, you know, I can see this previewed here. And so this is a georectified uh, raster. I can zoom in. And uh, my tiles will come in. And I still have the layer opacity. Um, change functionality which allows me to um, you know see what's there today and see what you know see what was there and I can see this body of water um, another thing is we geo blacklight also enables like custom download types so I've shown you um, downloads from uh, web services but it also allows downloads um, from like direct files. So maybe I have a file server um, uh, with data that's on it. Um, by providing that in the correct Geo Blacklight schema format, Geo Blacklight will automatically recognize that there's a direct file download and set that as the preferred download. It can even do customized uh, download functionality. So Harvard provides a lot of their resources uh, through an email download service and so by um, so this is a raster image raster map and so I can use the Harvard email download service which we have implemented here um, by clicking that 
um, typing in my email and requesting it. And um, actually, I just received an email um, that my download is ready, and now I can go ahead and download it directly from Harvard. So, it, you know, it, it's it's customizable and it's flexible. It allows um, you know various different formats to you know um, you know enable uh, different institutions in the way that they handle their um, their downloads. So that's all I have to demo today. Um, we're excited about hearing feedback from others, um, adding functionality, um, enhancing uh, features that already exist. And I just would invite everybody to go check out earthworks.stanford.edu. Uh, submit your feedback on the feedback, feedback link up at the top. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.